Hello, hello. For Song of the Day today, we're looking at Elisa Crampton's Nativity. Um, I've followed her career now for, I guess, around five years, starting with this, the American Drift EP. Um, and it's really cool to see someone who's working in such like a unique genre, really a genre she almost created entirely herself, um, how she's still continuing to like develop and explore things uh, while still kind of retaining the, the qualities that, that kind of developed her niche that, that people have been looking to her music for. Um, so like most of her work, this is sample-based, um, really atmospheric, uh, trying to draw upon kind of what feels like almost primordial or, or kind of really deep within um, responses that we have to certain sounds. Um, not really necessarily trying to draw upon some specific connection in your mind, uh, but more um, general emotional connection. Uh, and we see this in all of her work. Uh, this is kind of the, the foundational structure of it, mixed in with her own kind of unique samples. At the beginning, you can hear the trademark E, uh, which, which she uses on a lot of her tracks. It's just kind of this voice. It almost sounds like a radio announcer or something saying E. Um, and it, unfortunately, it lines up with that E meme that was popular for a while. And I always just think of that. And it's probably not the association that she was going for or an association that she should expect reasonable people to have. But it's an association that I have. And, and I got to say, it and everything else just continues to enrich the music further. Um, the thing that she does on this track... Uh, which I've, I've seen her experiment with uh, on some of the songs she posts to her SoundCloud, um, but not before on something that made it to like one of her actual albums, one of her official releases, uh, which is a really beautiful kind of transcendent break from this really kind of beat-driven, uh, almost apocalyptic sound. Like, like normally you get this sense from her music, but everything is just kind of cascading around you and and crumbling into dust and you're, you're kind of hearing the sound of this fragmented dust drift past you. But here she finds this space of total serenity uh, and this acoustic guitar comes in. It's, it's like a, a much more, I don't know, um, kind of approachable uh, territory for her music. Uh, and the way that she, she so deftly weaves this into such a short track compared to her earlier work, which was all about kind of long progressions and stuff, um, is really, really impressive. It, it really demonstrates a mastery over her own style uh, that I think um, really signifies how she's developing as an artist. So yeah, I, I thought this was really cool. I'll, um, it almost made my top albums list, uh, the self-titled album. I really feel like in many ways her work is just continuing to evolve across every release, but it's in moments like this that I can really pinpoint where. I can I can hear something and be like, oh, she wouldn't have done that before. Like this is something new that she's trying to to expand her music into. So yeah, it's really cool. It's it's a benefit of um, being such a music nerd and trying to follow every artist that you like uh, with their career into perpetuity. Um, you get to hear this sort of evolution of sound. And uh, more than even enjoying this, and enjoying this, I certainly do. It's the th thrill of thinking about where she can go from here. What what more? Whoops! What more is in store? Um, will we see further development of this more ambient, relaxing, serene space? Are we going to see uh, an even wider pool of of references and sort of pre cultural memetics uh, drawn into the sample base? One of my favorite things she still ever does is it's actually on this track, Axicon, where she brings in the sound of ch crickets chirping. And uh, in the same way that so many other samples have kind of recalled parts of human culture, this kind of cultural memory, um, it seems to suggest that we have cultural memories like this going back beyond recorded history, beyond recorded music or, or music in general or art like this, back when all, that was, all there was was the sound of nature. And that these sounds of nature still kind of lurk within us and, and can be stirred um, and are still mapped to some long lost ancestral feeling that lingers in, in the deepest part of our mammalian brains. Um, yeah, it's, it's really beautiful music.
Uh, and I, and I think too that when she she segues into oh there's like a collection of images here I didn't know that um, when she segues into this uh, really melodic beautiful guitar part um, that again it's it's drawing on something more than just our, our sort of intelligent understanding of it something very innate and deep within us I, I feel is being roused by that all right I think that's all I have to say about it. We talked for about twice the length of the song, so that sounds all right. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, check her out. Really good. Uploaded for me to listen. Thanks, Renato.